so you're saying that there should be an effort for increased vaccinations of, of kids going to school, just not for societal benefit, but for the benefit of each individual kid, right? So right now, kids under 12, right, are not yet vaccinated. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. And it's going to be, it's not going to be in time for school opening that they get vaccinated. Um, and then, I mean, I suppose the teachers are all going to be vaccinated. It makes sense for them to do that. But I'm just worried the kids are going to be transmitting it amongst them. And the, many states don't allow mask mandate in school. So I think that's what's driving the larger narrative in the U.S. to protect kids. It's kind of what I hear from Daniel Griffin, because mm -hmm. increasing numbers of kids are being admitted to hospitals now because they're the they're becoming the major unvaccinated population they're hanging out over the summer and that's just going to get worse in the fall. And so you could have a lot of kids with long covid and disabled their entire lives, right? So and of course hearing from people who are vaccine hesitant, I hear exactly the kids statement, but they're saying they don't want the long vaccine, <laughs> the long-term effects of the vaccine to affect the kids. That's the, of the, co of this new vaccine. Which, which I would say is, as we, as I said before, you can't say never, but we do know that long COVID exists. We don't know for how long, because we've only looked out six or eight months. We know that exists and the frequency is increasing. It certainly exists in young kids and we have no idea about long vaccine effects. So I think they have to make their decision based on that. But, yeah. But your question is, why don't we just open up society, say, here we have these vaccines if you want to protect yourself. I think it's mainly the school that's driving the whole narrative. That's my opinion. In which direction? Not to open up? or No, to open up, but to try and get, you know, there are efforts at the federal level to get people vaccinated, right? But see, uh, how high are the risks for kids? I mean, as uh, my understanding was, it's. I mean, yes, it's non-zero, but it's very low. For in, in yeah, but what is the numbers now? Seventy thousand hospitalizations so far in kids as of last week. So yes, it's low, yeah. but I, I, the polio was low. Polio was twenty, thirty thousand kids a year paralyzed, uh, and. Well, many people have actually argued that that vaccine wasn't necessary, you know. That wasn't a substantial but, enough so, health so, problem. But paralyzed is different than hospital. So what, well, what does COVID. hospitalized mean? Long what, COVID. But it's the long COVID question. I mean, this is the open question. Of what yes. is long COVID in kids? What is that? So, well, a lot of the same issues, cognitive issues, uh, motor issues, respiratory, GI dysfunction. How long? We don't know. I mean, it could end in a year. As you know, there are other post-acute infectious sequelae that we know about. You know, chronic fatigue, ME-CFS, is thought to be a post-infectious sequelae, which has gone for many decades now and many millions of people. This could be another another one of those. So uh, I'm just saying it might be worth erring on the side of not letting the kids get infected. Yeah, but well... I'm trying to keep an open mind here and I appreciate you doing you doing the same. Of course, I uh, lean on definitely not requiring people to get vaccinated, but I do think getting vaccinated is just um, the wiser choice. If looking at uh, all the different trajectories before mm -hmm. us, getting vaccinated is um, seems like, from the data, it seems like the obvious choice, frankly. But I'm also trying to keep an open mind because some things in the past that seemed obvious would turn out to be completely wrong. So I'm trying to keep an open mind here.